Hey guys and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video I wanted to sit down and talk Japanese sunscreens. Ever since the Korean sunscreen scandal broke like two years ago, lots of people have been reaching for Japanese sunscreens as a lightweight, elegant alternative to those Korean sunscreens which weren't living up to the brand's SPF claims. There's been some recent testing done on Japanese sunscreens and I'm delighted to say that quite a few of the brands did pass. There were a cost of a couple of fails which I will come on to later in the video, but I think some of this testing opened up a wider discussion around Japanese sunscreens in general. That's when I sit down and talk to you today. So sit back, relax, and let's talk Japanese sunscreens. Now, before we jump in to the results of this testing and discuss my thoughts and feelings on Japanese sunscreens, I do want to call out just one thing first. Of course, when we talk Japanese sunscreens, we are of course talking those Japanese brands which sit below the Japanese standards and regulatory framework. I'm aware that you shouldn't just cast every single brand that sits beneath those all as the same. There's so much variance and things to consider, which I'm going to come on to later in the video. The first thing that I want to call out when it comes to Japanese sunscreens is it's really difficult to find a cruel free option. The reason for this is a lot of Japanese brands sell and export to mainland China which mandates animal testing on all sunscreen products. This can be problematic because it's very difficult to find a Japanese brand which doesn't export into mainland China and so if you are looking to buy entirely cruelty free skincare then perhaps you'll have to look elsewhere for your sunscreen than out of Japan. There are a couple of exceptions to this which I will leave in the description box below if you do want to check them out in more detail but I think if you're looking to be entirely cruelty free, maybe Japan isn't where it's at in terms of sunscreen. Another thing that this testing revealed was the relatively lower levels of UVA protection afforded by some of the most popular Japanese sunscreens. We all tend to focus down on the SPF value, which protects us against the UVB rays, those that burn the skin. However, we often overlook the UVA protection that a product's giving, which is just as important. UVA radiation can damage the skin, it can cause premature aging, and of course it can lead to cancers down the line. So this is something that we need to be mindful of. And whilst traditionally we've always looked at the SPF values, really you should be looking for something that's broad spectrum and delivering protection against UVB and UVA radiation. This actually led the people conducting this test to conclude that you get a better overall level of protection from European sunscreens. However, Japanese sunscreens tend to feel better on the skin, apply better and give a more cosmetically elegant feel. Whilst a lot of people will be quite dismissive of that and say well actually you should always be focusing down on the level of protection rather than how the product wears and feels on the skin. I think this is a bit of a simplistic approach because actually a product is only as good as whether you actually apply the right amount and apply it frequently enough. You're more likely to do that with a cosmetically elegant product that you look forward to applying and works well with your skin. So whilst you should always prioritize the level of protection a product gives, we also need to be mindful of the way it feels on the skin because ultimately there's a whole cohort of people that don't use sunscreen as they should because they don't like the feel of the products and how they sit on the skin. So marrying up that level of protection with a gorgeous luxurious feel that applies well on the skin is really important. Now shall we take a look into this testing and talk about some of the most popular Japanese brands. I'm going to start with the positives and those which passed their testing. There are some fails which I'll come on to later in the video but if you want to use the timestamps below to jump to a specific point be my guest. First and foremost I am super excited that the Biore UV water essence passed its SPF testing. This is huge because this is the one product that I'm going to talk about today that I have used quite frequently in my own skincare routine. I love this product because it goes on completely matte to my oily acne prone skin and it doesn't clog the pores or break me out. I think this is because it has a relatively high amount of drying alcohol in here which won't be for everybody. There's a whole cohort of people that don't like drying alcohols either because they're sensitive to them or they have dry skin and it can dry it out further. I totally appreciate that but for someone like me that has oily acne prone skin a little denatured alcohol in a sunscreen can be really great allow it to apply better to the skin give a more matte feel and just overall a better application this is advertised as being an SPF of 50 plus by Viore and the independent uh, studies showed it to deliver an, on average an SPF of 56 this is fantastic because it also gave a relatively good level of UVA protection whilst there's some discussion around what SPF 50 plus actually means it 
does depend where in the world you live as to what the regulations surrounding using the plus after the SPF 50 determines. In some countries, it means it has to deliver an SPF of 60 to be able to be categorized as that. In others, it just means you have to be delivering an SPF of 51 to be able to use the 50 plus symbol. I'm classing this as a pass, even though it didn't reach the SPF of 60 that some markets determine, because on average, I think an SPF of 56 can be determined as an SPF of 50 plus. So I think we're off to a flying start. Before we move on to some of the other products tested as part of this study, I have left a link to it all in the description box if you do want to read about it in more detail. I also want to call out that this is just one suite of testing and one study. There are of course margins of error built into all of this and it's just one type of test in terms of determining the SPF value. So you do need to bear that in mind when you're making your own purchasing decision. But of course, the, we are limited to the data that we actually have, which is why I wanted to share it today. And now I'm going to move on to the Ali UV Protector Gel. This is the most popular sunscreen in Japan, and so I'm delighted that this has also passed its SPF testing. It's great to know that the Japanese consumers are reaching for a product which is delivering the SPF that the brand has claimed, as this actually came in as an SPF of 62 when tested. The reason this formulation and this product is relatively unique amongst other Japanese sunscreens is because it has a high level of water resistance, sweat resistance, and rub proof. This is really different to a lot of the other Japanese sunscreens, which tend to apply really well on the skin, but don't always give a high level of water resistance. This does, and it also gives some good level of UVA protection as well. I haven't personally tried this product, but from what everyone's saying online and the feedback that I've been getting from you guys, it is a super popular product for a reason goes on beautifully to the skin and gives a relatively dewy um, finish if that's something that you're looking for. Of course, share any of your thoughts and feelings on any of the products that I mentioned today in the comment section below because I'd love, love, love to hear it. And while you're down there, why not give the video a like to support the channel? Another product that did relatively well out of this testing is the Anessa Perfect UV Sun Milk. I'm glad that this um, performed well against the SPF 50 Plus, which the brand claims it delivers because this is a super popular Japanese sunscreen here in the West. This actually tested as delivering an SPF of 45. Now, whilst that is below the SPF 50 plus that the brand were claiming, this is within the margin of error because of course with these testings you do have a margin of error either side of that. And so depending on where this actually fits within that, it could be coming close to that SPF of 50 plus. Whilst a lot of people might be looking elsewhere on hearing this because of course they want something that delivered in excess even with that margin of error of that SPF 50 plus claimed, this is a super popular product applies really well to the skin and you know I think we all have to be mindful of the level of protection we need taking into account our own skin type the UV levels of UV radiation wherever in the world we live and of course any underlying medical conditions that we might have and might make us more photosensitive and susceptible to burning this comes in at SPF of 45 which I would consider enough for my skin type here in the UK where the UV index is relatively low compared to some other areas and I have no underlying uh, medical conditions conditions that I need to take account of. This gave an okay or average level of UVA protection as well and whilst this some might be disappointed with these findings other people might be delighted if this is their tried and tested favourite that it came close to that SPF 50. I'll leave you to make your own assessment and judgment on that but I did just want to call out the testing on this one. Finally I want to call out the Skin Aqua Super Moisture Gel. I've actually already covered this in a separate video which I will leave a link to up there if you want to know some more details about this product specifically and um, how it's formulated and how it applies to the skin. This also tested, as with the Anessa one, as an SPF of 45. This is slightly below the SPF 50 plus, which the brand was claiming, but again, within that margin of error. So we do need to take account of that. Again, I'll leave you guys up to make your own decision on whether that's a product that you want to consider a pass or a fail, want to purchase from or not. Um, but again, it's good to have that actual SPF value under those independent third-party testing so we can really make an informed consumer decision. Now, before I come on to my thoughts, thoughts and feelings on the overall Japanese sunscreen market, there are two fails that I want to call out. First and foremost is the Curel UV Protection Essence. This is advertised by the brand as being an SPF of 30, but the testing showed it was delivering an SPF of just nine. That is way below what any dermatologist would recommend you reach for in terms of UVB protection. And it also scored the lowest in terms of the UVA protection that it gave at a 3.6. This is ridiculously low in terms of the UVA protection this is giving. And so honestly, this is just a firm pass for me, whichever way you look at it. It does feel good on the skin, but could we honestly, should we be reaching for this level of protection? Absolutely not. There are so many great ones out there. And whether you want to go for an SPF of 
of 30, 40, 50. I don't think there's really a place for anyone to be reaching for an SPF of nine, especially because it's so low compared to what the brand was claiming. I also want to call out the Kose Comfort Sun Cut Sun Gel. This is advertised as being an SPF of 50 plus by the brand, but actually came in measured as an SPF of 27 and a relatively low level of UVA protection, again, rating as an eight on that scale. I'll come on to some comparisons with European sunscreens later so you can see how these, um, these ratings actually do come compare and contrast. But this is a lot lower than what the brand claimed. And honestly, I don't think it's giving the level of protection that would make me want to reach for this brand and this specific formulation at all. So again, it's a firm, firm pass for me. So taking into account all of this, what are my thoughts and feelings on Japanese sunscreens going forward? Well, I go back to my original point that it's really difficult to find a Japanese sunscreen which is entirely cruelty free. This is something that matters a lot to me when I come to making a purchase, which is why I tend not to gravitate towards Japanese sunscreens. However, it's not the primary motivating factor for everyone when they come to make a purchase, and I totally understand that. So beyond just that factor, I think we do need to be mindful that a lot of the brands tested did fall below their advertised UVA protection. I think as a market, the Japanese sunscreen market seems to be very focused on delivering great UVB SPF protection, which is fantastic, but I don't think it's a, t a market which really gets to grips with the UVA protection in the same way. This is really important because I never think we should neglect the UVA protection and whilst a lot of people might be mystified as to what these UVA figures really mean does eight in the case of the Kose sun gel is that good is that bad let me give you a little bit of an example they tested alongside all of these in the same way a lot of European sunscreens and concluded that European sunscreen formulations generally gave a better level of UVA protection than their Japanese counterparts the best performing was from Bioderma with their Photoderma Max sunscreen which can be a little bit difficult to get here in the West, but is super popular in Japan. That gave an SPF of 87 in these testing, way in excess of the 50 plus that was advertised. And it also gave a UVA rating of 67. This is like sky high when it comes to UVA protection. And when you compare and contrast that to the eight given by the Kose or the three given by the Curel, you can really see the variance in protection that you're getting from what appear to be very similar products. I want to call this out because I think this is the main reason why the Japanese sunscreen market isn't my go-to. That alongside the um, animal testing issues that I called out for earlier. I would, however, love to know what your thoughts and feelings are. Of course, being able to share this testing, hopefully it will allay any of the fears if these are your favorite sunscreens. You know you're getting that UVB protection locked in, but share your thoughts, feelings, and comments below. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and look after your skin. Take care. Bye.